Hey guys, how's it going? So welcome back to Premiered. This is a bit you bar and today we're going to cover combined science. It's been it's been a while since we, we covered that, okay? So this is an interesting paper. It's um 2020 uh, paper, November. Okay. So Zimsec, this is this is this was a good paper as well, we're just reviewing all the questions there. So I managed to get this paper from SciTech, SciTech.co.zw. So you should check them out if you are studying on your own. I think uh, they have uh, incredible resources. So you should uh, check that out. So I hope that you stick around and you know get so much value because we'll be discussing uh, the questions, not just answering uh, the questions. Okay. So uh, the first question says, uh, which one is a biological component of an ecosystem? Okay. So uh, ecosystem. There's a study we call it uh, ecology. Just to give you a background so that we are on the same page. There's a study, it's called Ecology. So you can actually go to our university to study this, or maybe um, a paper, or maybe a subsection of, uh, of Ecology. Ecology, um, it's simply a study of uh, the interactions um, of the various components of the ecosystem, okay? So ecosystem is, is another buzzword here. Ecosystem uh, simply means uh, the coexistence and the interactions between them the uh, biotic and the abiotic. So um, you'll be having the, the biotic, sorry. So you're having the biotic and you'll be having what's called the abiotic. So abiotic simply means non-biotic, okay? So biotic simply means living, living, uh, living the living components, they're called uh, biotic, and then the non-living components, they're called um, Abiotic, okay, so that's it. And if you just want to know the biotic components, those are easy to know because uh, there are not too many. So you're looking at uh, a bacteria, you're looking at a bacteria, you're also looking at uh, fungi. Some people say fungi, so you're looking at fungi, and you're also looking at uh, uh, flora, so means, means plants. And you're also looking at animals, so it means uh, fauna. So you can say animals, yeah, it's still fine. Okay, so the, the other thing that uh, we also cover from here is actually insects, okay. Insects are a part of, of the, the biome, so they are part of the uh, biotic uh, environment, the biotic components of the ecosystem, okay. They are biotic, those are non-living. So you're looking at uh, maybe sunlight, so you can just say light. And then you're also looking at um, uh, air, uh, maybe soil. So these are non-living, okay? So even nutrients as well. Nutrients are non-living. So all these components, we call them components of the, of the abiotic uh, 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 ecosystem, okay? So their interactions, we studied them in um, this ecosystems. The interactions of all this stuff we, we studied them uh, is an ecosystem and that study is called ecology okay so that's um just about it for the for the background well we also link all the background for the next question as well because um it's it also pertains to uh what what we are what we are discussing here just now okay so you're looking for the stuff that actually has living things so obviously air, air is part of the of the abiotic or the non-living uh, components of the of the ecosystem. So this one cannot be. So and uh, soil also we mentioned it. It's uh, it's over here. And water you can also include water here, okay? Because uh, it's non-living. But the the humus now or some say humus. So humus I think uh, humus is the correct pronunciation. Humus has uh, some micro microorganisms there, some microbes. So you'd actually count this one as part of the, part of the, of the biotic uh, components of the of the ecosystem. Okay, so you have to choose this one, and let's let's move to the next question. So next question, what does it say? Next question says the diagram shows some stages in the nitrogen cycle. Okay, so this is the nitrogen cycle. Uh, some stages there's not all showing all. So which 
R O A B C O D represents the decomposers. Okay, so decomposers we say that they are uh, sapro saprophytic. So saprophytic, they are sap uh, saprophytes. So they actually feed on um, uh, dead um, plants and uh, uh, dead animals. Okay, so if you can imagine the ecosystem, it's sort of like this interconnection and the, within this interconnection there are certain cycles because you have to recycle nutrients uh, if an animal leaves then you know it accumulates certain nutrients over its lifetime and it also shades um, it also shades um, a certain systems uh, certain certain nutrients over its lifetime as well and um, when it dies now we actually have to recycle back uh, whatever nutrients that the, the animal will be having okay so the way you do you actually do it by by uh, a process called a process called decomposition okay so uh, you use decomposers okay to uh, recycle back whatever nutrients that uh, that you want okay so let me actually see if I can move this up a little bit yeah this is good so yeah so well uh, the the decomposers would be the stage here okay. Why? Because you're having plant protein and then you're having ammonium uh, compounds, okay? So the, the, the decomposition of plant protein is carried out by microbes. So the microbes, they, they carry out that part and uh, they recycle nutrients, okay? And here, yeah, the stage D, it's, uh, it's actually uh, from nitrite. So nitrite and nitrates. The way that you can uh, think of this is that uh, nitrates, they have... Um, uh, three oxygen okay so here you're looking at three oxygen and in uh, each molecule and then nitrites you're looking at uh, only two oxygen oxygen atoms okay so here this process here of adding those oxygen atoms it's actually called oxidation okay so if you want to get uh, nitrites from nitrate then you have to uh, go through a process called reduction okay so in nature we have this oxidation so that we produce our uh, nitrites okay so there's also nitrogen fixing uh for example using lightning okay so lightning can also fix nitrogen lightning it's um like so much in terms of uh, the energy input into a, a molecule it's uh, it's a very massive so when you're having a, a nitrogen molecule like this okay so uh, lightning can actually go and strike this very well so that it breaks okay so when it breaks it gets washed into into nitrogen compounds which are, are then found in, in water okay so that's the traditional way that it was done but then now we we, we now have fertilizers for the nitrification of of soil okay to reintroduce certain in, in, uh, nutrients not only nitrogen but also some other uh, uh, nutrients as well okay so that's just about it uh, so this is oxidation this is reduction and um, here you're just uh, the nitrates are actually going to into the atmosphere so this is denitrification uh, you're actually taking away the, the nitrates from the from the environment okay so yeah that's just about it for the second question so question three asks us which equation which equation shows the process of anaerobic respiration in humans okay so uh, the buzzwords or the key phrases here they are anaerobic respiration and in humans okay so you're supposed to discuss this in in terms of uh, in humans why because they they actually two okay this can also happen in yeast for example in other uh, microorganisms and it can, can also happen in in humans they are anaerobic respiration in the sense that these uh, processes they happen in the absence of oxygen okay but uh, essentially they are that is the only thing that's common between them but uh, essentially there they are some differences okay then this difference they actually reflect in the, in the equations okay so here you can identify the the one for uh, anaerobic respiration in humans would be this this first one here why because you're just having glucose you're producing lactic acid and energy lactic acid it's a it's um it's it's an acid obviously it's always it's a compound and it's it's um an energy pack as well so anaerobic respiration when you just it's it's an emergency thing so you actually don't uh, get uh, as much energy or as much atp as um, you'd get if you were at rest okay so 
a part of that reason is that there is actually some energy trapped in in lactic acid. So lactic acid is actually an energy pack. Uh, when you run upstairs, your knees, they, they, they have this burning sensation just because uh, of the accumulation of lactic acid. So after, after you, 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 maybe you're taking rest or something, your body actually converts further that lactic acid to uh, produce more energy. Okay, so this is how it happens. So this one is for, for anaerobic respiration in humans. If they ask you anaerobic respiration in, uh, uh, in yeast, so which is called fermentation, this one is slightly different, okay? So you actually have to uh, include that. So uh, the fermentation in, in yeast, you have glucose and then you have ethanol plus uh, carbon dioxide plus energy. So you'd actually be having uh, carbon dioxide plus energy. You won't be having this. Okay, so it would be this reaction minus minus this part here. Okay, so this is how, how we, we brew maybe beer, something like that. Especially traditionally, this is how you'd uh, uh, go about it. Okay, so, and uh, glucose, uh, getting ethanol plus energy, this is just not it. And this is not, uh, just not it. So we could just go with, uh, with A, okay. So that's just about it. Let's see if we can get more questions from here. So during germination, uh, the seed coat breaks uh, due to the uptake of uh, and you just so you know the seed coat if uh, for most seeds most uh, trees what they do is um, it's it's just an exchange okay so if you look at seed dispersal so there's uh, this one I'm sure you have uh, discussed it before so it's called seed uh, dispersal or dispersal so well, what it means is uh, if I'm if I'm a tree I want my progeny I want to uh, spread as much as I can, my my the, the, the survival instinct of um, uh, all living organisms. Okay, so it's not in instinct, uh, instinctive to plants, but then they actually have mechanisms logged in that allow for that, so that we have more trees. So what they do is um, they do a trade off. They'll be having some some fruit, and within that fruit they'll be having some seeds. These seeds they they have a coat, so the coat is to protect. Uh, you do you don't want for 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 example the tree it's it's not in the best interest of the tree to have the the court be soft why because uh that way uh, a, 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 an animal can just can just break through using its teeth uh, but then that's that that won't be productive for the for the for the plant so in order for the plant to maintain its progeny to reproduce it actually has to provide for for that coating so that uh, uh when the when the animal goes and then it disperses, somehow uh, the seed inside is protected and it is still being intact. And then the plant can actually colonize new areas. Okay, so that's that's how it happens. So there's a quart which is there uh, for a mango. A mango seed, the, the seed is actually inside there. It's actually, actually soft. So there are many ways by which uh, the, the, the seed can, can break. Okay, so there are mechanical ways. And uh, it can also break due to microbial uh, action, so using microbes. And um, uh, a common way by which uh, during germination a seed breaks is because of um, uh, water. Okay, so there's, um, uh, you probably know the, the word imbibe. So I'm always going to butcher the spelling here. But then the word uh, imbibe, so, so this this process here, I don't know how to uh, pronounce this, but then it comes from the word imbibe. So you can say imbibation. So I think uh, the, the, the tree to fly, and um, essentially this is the process by which um, a, 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 a seed inside. So it would be taking up water, and then it would be swelling up. Uh, you can see this um, usually for for some if you put uh, some seeds uh, in water or something like that, you can see that it swells up. And then it breaks the coat, and once it once it breaks the coat, now it uh, can continue its its germination because this is the the first process. Uh, a, a seed cannot grow with its coating; the coating has to uh, to break. Okay, so this happens when the seed takes up water. So that's uh, that's when you you uh, you'd see this. So the ne the next question, question five. I just realized that we didn't load question five here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load question five in the next uh, video but then for now we'll do question six but then we'll do five seven uh, going on, going forward in the next video okay so plasmolysis causes so plasmolysis this is a, a condition in a, in a cell okay so where the cell shrinks uh it shrinks away from the it shrinks away from the cell wall the cell membrane it shrinks away from the cell wall 
just because of uh, uh, concentration gradient in, uh, in terms of water. Okay, so water concentration um, inside the cell will be more. So you can uh, think of it as uh, if you uh, would put maybe uh, a potato and then you've put it in uh, some concentrated solution. That potato, most of its water to actually come out and um, uh, populate the, the surrounding where there is a concentrated solution. This is just natural, it's a passive process. It doesn't take any energy. It's just uh, a process of circumstance, okay? So that's what um, um, our plasmolysis is. So you'd have the cell membrane moving away from the cell wall. Uh, this is this is what you'd, uh, you'd have. Uh, there's something called TGDT. So, TGDT, like this. This one is the opposite of uh, uh, plasmolysis, okay? So you would actually have a cell, a cell swelled up. So when it swells up, it actually has uh, its cell membrane um, in close contact or resting against uh, the, the cell wall, okay? So, and um, there's actually an, an interesting experiment where you have a blood cell, a red blood cell, and you have an animal, an, an animal cell, and then uh, you have an animal cell, which is a blood cell, and then you have a plant cell, uh, which is maybe, uh, we can say, palisade cell. When you put, uh, uh, when you set the concentrated gradient such that uh, these two, they become tagged, um, maybe you can put a red blood cell in distilled water. What happens is that it bursts. Why? Because it doesn't have a cell wall to support it, okay? So it's like um, having uh, a tube, so a balloon. If you keep pumping it, it's going to burst at some point. But then for uh, animal cells, for plant cells, it's slightly different. Why? Because they actually have, you can think of it as that, that skin in a football. So you can keep pumping, you can keep pumping, but then uh, the skin will make sure that, uh, you know, you don't pump too much. It will actually get harder, harder, harder until it uh, reaches some uh, mechanical equilibrium of some sort, okay? So that's, uh, that's just about it, that's uh, plasmolysis. And uh, so we'll choose this one, the cell membrane going, moving away from the, from the cell wall. This is where we would see plasmolysis. The opposite is TGDT, okay? So uh, you'd be having the cell membrane going towards the cell wall. So yeah, that's just about it. And um, I'll catch you, uh, you know, in the next one. Cheers. Mm -hmm.